starting a business is tough. Tons to do and never enough money. So you focus on your burning issues like your technology and your go-to-market strategy. And you might even be tempted to put other things off like your intellectual property and legal questions. But the problem? Those are burning issues too. And the longer you let them burn, the more damage they can do. Welcome to IPY. When it comes to your physical health, a bit of regular care can go a long way. Simple steps like a balanced diet and regular exercise keep you healthy now and avoid more serious problems down the road. Your business also needs to be healthy to grow strong and resilient. But many startups focus only on their technology and their finances, but that's like going to the gym every day and never brushing your teeth. Life throws us curveballs, maybe an accident or an illness, but if we're healthy, we're more resilient and we can survive shocks better. And for your business, resiliency comes from many factors, but one of them is regular attention to your IP and legal situation. You don't have money to waste, but if you're developing an idea that someone else has already patented, every dollar you're spending in ignorance is wasted. You also can't afford to accidentally give away IP or legal rights that you need for success. Paying attention to your IP is like dental hygiene for your business. It's smart now and way better and cheaper in the long run. IP professionals include lawyers, patent agents, and trademark agents. Lawyers provide legal advice such as on contracts or potential disputes. Patent and trademark agents can help with IP strategies and filing patents and trademarks. And some IP professionals, like me, are both lawyers and patent and trademark agents. Of course, you need to find someone with the right experience and skill set, but they also need to be a good fit. How's the working relationship? Do they share your business philosophy? Are they used to working with startups? Ask for referrals from friends, peers, mentors, and then find the right fit for you. You don't have to hire the first one you meet. Many startups look for free IP advice, but that's totally the wrong mentality for two reasons. The first is you get what you pay for, nothing. Because the IP professional needs to understand your business reality in order to provide you with good advice. And that's not gonna happen in a short call or a hallway meeting. When you see a new doctor for the first time, you mostly get generic advice because they don't know you. No tests, no medical history, no risk factors, nothing. For your business, it's the same. When you first meet your IP professional, you get mostly generic advice because they don't know your business yet. But more importantly, remember, you're trying to build resilience right now. And that's just as important as robust technology or a slick go-to-market plan. So if you're serious, you need to be ready to invest in your IP. It's your single most valuable asset right now, and it deserves way more than just free advice. An IP professional is essential to help you ensure your contracts properly support your IP and business goals, validate your IP strategy roadmap, assess your freedom to operate, FTO risks, and other things like file patent and trademark applications, assess your secrets protection, respond to IP threats, and so on. Sure, you can do some of these yourself, just like you could do your own dentistry, but that's not a good idea because the stakes are high and fixing your mistakes will be painful and costly. We'll look at each of these activities in a moment, but first let's uncover a bit more about IP professionals' fees. IP professionals generally charge based on the amount of time they spend working on something, and rates differ depending on experience and location. But more expensive isn't always better, and sometimes cheaper ends up costing more. So don't fall into the trap of looking only at cost. It's only one factor to consider when you're choosing your IP professional. Your IP professional needs to understand your technology and your business. But when you're engaging someone for the first time, they won't know either. And that makes it difficult for them to quote firm prices for many types of IP advice. And that makes sense. Initially, all they can do is provide a typical cost range. But that's also good news for you because it means you can help manage your costs. An IP professional's work involves two steps, diagnosing your situation and then providing the right advice or service. And if you can make either of those steps easier, it helps you manage your costs. So the keys are preparation and participation. And doing those will also help you get a better result. So let's look at some of the things that you can do. 
No matter what kind of support you need, the more that the IP professional knows about your business, the more effective and cost effective the outcome will be. So prepare for your first meeting by summarizing your technology and what differentiates you in the marketplace. Include your business goals, your go-to-market strategy, and how you plan to make money. This pre-work will help guide the first meeting, but it'll also be a great future reference for your IP professional. But be clear and succinct, because being complicated and confusing won't help. As we saw in the last video, having the wrong contract or no contract can be really bad. So it's a wise investment to ask a lawyer to prepare contract templates that are actually suited to your business. And having a lawyer review your other contracts before you sign them can also save tons of money and headaches. If money's tight, you could ask your lawyer to review only for big risk items like IP or liability. That's not ideal, but it's better than no review at all. You can prepare for contract review by creating a summary of the related business arrangement, your goals, and key concerns. The conductor keeps the orchestra synchronized and in tune, and that's also what an IP strategy roadmap does for you, so that your IP investments are high impact and not wasted. And having one also impresses the heck out of investors. Even if money's tight, you do most of the work yourself, and you can decide how much time your IP professional spends helping you improve it. Phasing and sprints can also help space things out. Your costs will ultimately depend on the quality of your pre-work and the complexity of your business. Prepare by using the IPY Roadmap Guide on the website to create a first draft, and then participate by assisting your IP professional with later drafts and any follow-up research. Only a registered trademark protects your brand from copycats. Your business name registration just won't do that. Although unregistered trademarks are possible and free, they're very weak and extremely expensive to enforce. This is another example where free is just not a good strategy. Trademark registration requires a filing in each country where you want protection, say Canada and the US, and costs a couple of thousand dollars per country spread over a couple of years. Even if money's tight, your brand is your identity. So this is an essential investment for your future. Prepare by summarizing the products or services you want to use with the brand and any similar names or brands that others are already using in the marketplace. In our FTO video, we discovered how FTOs help avoid IP risks. It's like looking both ways before you cross the street. FTOs have two phases, a search and then a risk assessment. For an early stage startup, all you really need to know is, is your key differentiator, the thing that sets you apart from all the others, is it blocked or not? Later, investors and scaling partners will want more detailed searching and legal analysis, but for now, a focused search and a practical review will be enough. To prepare, check out the FTO video and guide on the IPY website, and you can participate by assisting your IP professional with additional searching and helping them to assess the patents found in the searches. Even if money's tight, an FTO is essential to ensure the road ahead is clear. It also impresses investors. So when it comes to FTOs, doing something is always better than doing nothing. The cost of patenting can strike fear into the hearts of startups, but it shouldn't. Because first of all, well-planned patents are really powerful, so you're getting something big for the money. Secondly, patent offices offer SME discounts of 50% and sometimes more, and provisional patents can provide additional cost savings as we discovered in previous videos. Thirdly, you can tailor your level of investment. Not everyone needs a Ferrari. Work with your IP professional to determine your needs, but if you do need a Ferrari, then find a way to afford it. As we've seen in previous videos, delaying patenting can lead to disaster. And remember, you don't have to be able to afford a lawsuit because most patents never go to court. But as we've seen in this series, well-planned patents are still really valuable. Prepare by having an IP strategy roadmap to guide the preparation of your patent and participate using the tips that I covered in the video on well-planned patents. When it comes to your physical health, small things can provide lasting benefits, and that's also true for your business. With a bit of knowledge and a bit of action at the right time, your regular attention to these issues will help you build a more resilient business. In this series, my goal was to answer the question, why does intellectual property deserve your attention? Along the way, we saw many ways in which your IP can not only help you meet business objectives, but also provide you with options to grow and succeed. So, it's your turn now. You have what you need. It's time to get your IP working harder for you.